And let's start this video by saying thank you, Dr. Cotton, for everything you do for us. So this is our intro to chapter 14, Behavior of Gases, PowerPoint. As all of Dr. Cotton's, we're gonna start off today with our objectives. I have to see what this pen does. Okay, that. Um, we're gonna explain why gases are easier to compress, easier to compress than either solids or liquids. I'm gonna to go to a pen and go to that color. We're gonna talk about the three factors that affect gas pressure. And these are three factors that you'll not even have to recognize because they're already on the back of your periodic table in the combined gas law formula. So you know this already. This is a factoid you know. Gases expand to fill the container. Unlike solids or liquids, solids or liquids have a fixed volume. but gases expand to fill their containers. The reverse is also true, or reverse is also true. They are easily compressed, and you've all heard of compressed gas. Um, gases can be compressed into small tanks, and then they are under pressure. And if you feel like singing a song right now, pause the video and sing the song. Compressibility is simply defined as a measure of how much the volume of matter can decrease when it is under pressure. So gases can be compressed. This is the idea behind airbags in automobiles. In an accident, when you smash into the airbag, the air compresses more than a steeling will compress. So if you strike an airbag, um, it will cushion you, so to speak, and a steering wheel will kill you. So the impact forces the gas particles closer together because as you remember from chapter 13, one of the postulates of the kinetic molecular theory is that gases have a huge amount of empty space between the particles. So at room temperature, the actual distance between the particles is approximately 10 times the diameter of the particle. So if you had a particle, then it'd be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. That's very approximate, but that's what that would look like. The empty space makes gases good insulators. And many of you are familiar with triple, double pane and triple pane windows. And that dead gas that's in between, not dead gas, but that gas that's sealed in between the windows um, act, makes that a very good insulator. Down coats, if you're familiar with deuce, goose down, down coats are great insulators. Down sleeping bags are good insulators. Some of you might have seen windows that have some condensation in them that never goes away, and that's because the seal is broken. So we're asked, how does the volume of particles in a gas compare to the overall? And it's itsy bitsy. So the four variables, we said early three, that, and their common units are Pressure, and pressure we usually measure in units of kilopascals. We also measure in units of atmospheres, millimeters mercury, tor, which is the same as millimeters mercury, and in the United States here, ugly, ugly PSI, pounds per square inch. And you should recall those, boy, that's a really wide, do I have a different pen setting? No, that's just going to be wide. Okay. Volume, which is in liters, and I'll talk more about that later, but um, pay close attention to volume. Often you'll see it in milliliters, and sometimes you'll have to fix that and convert it to liters. Temperature, this is critical. You cannot use a Celsius temperature. 
Never use degree C in gas calcs. There's a reason for this. And if you remember, Kelvin is an absolute scale. Zero degrees Celsius is a common temp. And you often divide by temp and you can't divide by zero. So that should make sense to you. And last but not least is, do I have an eraser? I do. Okay, so whatever's happening here. And the amount in moles, so moles. And we generally do that N. Oh, it says that. P, V, T, and N. And don't forget, T is always in Kelvin. So all of these three things, volume, temperature, and moles, affect the pressure. When we inflate a balloon, we're adding gas molecules. If we increase the number of particles, we increase the number of collisions, and thus the pressure increases, because pressure is always related to the number and magnitude of collisions. If the temperature is held constant, if we double the number of gas particles, if we double the moles of gas, we will double the pressure. So that is a direct relationship between pressure and amount of gas. So pressure and the number of molecules are directly related. More molecules, more collisions. Fewer molecules, fewer collisions. Here's a factoid you already know. Gases naturally move from areas of high pressure to low pressure because there's empty space to move into. An example would be a spray can. I like to think, you know, you know that a car tire is under pressure. If you take a knife and stab it into a, a car tire, the air does not flow from the air into the tire. The air flows from the tire, which the air was under pressure, out of the tire into the atmosphere. So gases naturally move from high to low pressure. Aerosol spray cans, everybody's familiar with spray cans. Gas moves from the high pressure in the can when you press a button to a lower pressure, which would be the atmosphere. And there's usually a propellant that forces the product out so example, my favorite example is paint. Okay. So there's the big question. Can an aerosol can ever be empty? If I press the button out, at what point? When will the gas stop exiting the can? When will the gas stop exiting the can? So think about that. If you want to pause here and discuss that, feel free. So when will the can keep expelling gas until every single air particle is out of the can? And you should get no, and you should be able to figure this one out. Volume. If we have a smaller container, we have the same number of particles, but the particles have less room to move. If they have less moved room to move, they will hit the sides of the container more often. So as volume decreases, pressure increases. And they like to think of a syringe, and I'll try to draw a syringe right here. Here's a syringe with a plunger. So if I put my finger on this, if I hold this plunger down, I've got this volume. And if I move the volume to right here, if I move this to here, I've got the same number of particles, but they'll be hitting way more often. So beautiful drawing, not, I'm erasing it. So as the volume decreases, pressure increases. That means if you stop and think about it, let's see what happened here. Keep, where did my slides go? I don't know. Okay, let's try this again. Sorry about that. Um, 
Okay. Back. Uh, so volume and pressure are, oh, what did I get a white pen? How did that happen? Are inversely related to each other. That means as pressure goes up, volume goes down. Inversely related. Temperature. If we increase the temperature of a gas, where did I get white? If I increase the temperature of a gas, the and the volume is held constant, the pressure will increase. Temperature and pressure are directly related. Increasing the temperature increases kinetic energy. And we have increased kinetic energy. Our molecules or particles have more speed and they will hit the walls with more force and more frequently. So that will increase the pressure. All this comes back to the kinetic molecular theory. So the question is, going back to the aerosol can, should you throw it in a fire? What might happen if you threw an aerosol can that is under pressure into a fire? Another thing, when should your automobile tire pressure be checked and think temperature? So if the pressure is related to temperature, what happens to the pressure in your tire when the temperature gets really, really high or when the temperature gets really, really low? Most of your cars, if you look in the manual, has a cold tire pressure um, information on here when it talks about your tire and loading information. Okay, so I'm gonna stop for this one because they take forever to upload. And that was section 14.1, a pretty simple section.